the better sphere to use in subdivision surface modelling. But what's wrong with the spheres that Blender provides us with? Well, let's add them and take a look. First of all, we have the UV sphere, which makes a great sphere if you don't want to use a subdivision surface modifier. But we always want to use a subdivision surface modifier. Let's add the modifier, which incidentally is normally not done in the modifier panel. You can add one to any object in object mode by pressing Control and 1, 2, 3, 4 or 5, which either adds the modifier to the object with those levels of subdivision or it changes the subdivision level of an existing modifier if there's already a one on there. Pressing Control and 0 turns it off for that object without removing the modifier. It's a very useful tip for working quickly. Now, the problem is this pole at the top, this single vertex connected to the first loop here, it's creating all of these triangles and the subdivision surface modifier just does not like them. It creates this pinching effect, which we can see a lot more clearly if we switch to one of the matte caps. Let's try the red one and we can see that that's unacceptable. Moving on, we can look at the icosphere. Well, already I can see that it's made entirely from triangles, so I know that's going to be a problem. If we add a subdivision surface modifier to it with control 3 and use the red matte cap display, we can see that it's very lumpy where the modifier is just struggling to display it properly with all these triangles. A more common but still incorrect sphere often used in subdivision surface modeling is the quad sphere and bizarrely Blender doesn't even provide one. There is an add-on which can give you one in the add menu but that's not correct either. Let me show you how most people get one and then we'll fix it. Start with a cube and add a subdivision surface modifier to it. Let's use a level of 3 by pressing Ctrl 3. We want to apply that modifier straight away so that we have more geometry to work with, but not so much geometry that modeling becomes a problem. 3 is a good level. Now we have a few choices. We can either use the cast modifier or the to sphere operation. They both do the same thing. Uh, I'll use the to sphere operation here and we can use the cast modifier in our later tutorial. Now in edit mode and point select mode, press shift, alt and s while dragging the mouse as far as you can to the right. This moves the points of the mesh into their correct-ish positions on a sphere. This is where most people will stop and decide that it's a good sphere. Well, it's not. The positions of some of the vertices are not correct because no account's been given for the three spoked poles at what used to be the corners of the cube that it came from. We need to fix this as best we can. Let's add another subdivision surface modifier now and take a look at that with the red mat cap. You can see in eight separate places the old corners are now bumps on our sphere. If we use the zebra stripe mat cap we can see them even more clearly. If we want any kind of reflective or specular material on this sphere uh, we'll be able to see these bumps. So let's fix them. First let's make a copy of this object and move it along the x-axis so we can compare the results when we're done. If we switch to wireframe mode and turn off X-ray so we can see more clearly, we can look for one of these old corners. Go to edit mode and select any one of the vertices with only three edges coming out of it. And we can quickly select all of the others by going to Select, Select Similar and Amount of Connecting Edges. You can now see that these are all selected around the sphere. To fix their positions, they actually need to be pushed in towards the center of the mesh very slightly. I normally make sure that 3D cursor is selected as the transform pivot point and I press S to scale them. Now the numbers I use are not perfect but they make a huge difference. After pressing S type 0.9946. We're not scaling them by much. Now if we go back to matcap mode we can see that the pinching effect has been reduced but it's still not enough. It turns out that the second row of vertices is also adding some influence to the effect and these need to be moved as well. In edit mode again, press Ctrl plus on the number pad and expand the selection out. You can now see we have these eight islands of vertices selected, so we can scale them to a better position. This time, press S and type 0.9983, an even smaller amount. Now, if we go back to our matte cap display, we can see that the effect has, has been all but eliminated, which will mean our sphere can have reflective materials and textures and look and work significantly more like a real sphere. We'll use this method a lot in later tutorials because the other spheres are just not good enough. Next, we'll take a look at the cylinder.